Yo guys, what is up with this video? I am reacting to the animals in Animal Crossing Aunt Animals by MatPat. Game Theory Unis. And if this is true, I think my mind might be shot in the head. Because if they ain't animals, what the hell are they? Can't. Oh, sorry, mutated humans. I, I don't know, okay. Yeah, if you're wondering, oh, he's wearing a different shirt from the last video, you know, same day. Oh, yeah, because uh, it's really, really ruined. So, I'm wearing this, you know, nice little, you know, uh, atom like, uh, atomic structure shirt. So, I'm trying to look intellectual. Yeah. So, let's get into the video. It's really long, so, there you go. No man is an island entire of its stuff. Each is a piece of the continent, a part of the main. Each man's death diminishes me. For I am involved in mankind, therefore, it's a nut to know <laughs> for whom the bell tolls. It tolls for thee. Meow. Bells? Did someone say bells? Here's a bell toll for ya. 15 million bells. I know what to do. Love this is and Bendy Ink if you know what I'm oh. Fortnite, Fortnite Toad, Double Hell Neighbor, Bowser, obviously you know the Hello place Internet, from Mario. welcome to that's... Game Theory, literally the only show you will ever see that's able to get away with inserting a John Donne poem into an online video about Animal Crossing. <laughs> I mean, that right there, my friends, is some quality content that is definitely worth subscribing to. Hint, hint, nudge, yeah. nudge, the button is right below Mine this too, video. I'm so very, Animal I'm very clear Crossing, as well. two that's why months I'm in, and I am videos. still doing my daily chores. Are you? Picking weeds is just therapeutic, dang it. But beyond the thrill of catching tarantulas, the thing that's most exciting about this game is how the current world situation has changed the way that it's being played. A company in Singapore made their own branded island getaway to lure in Animal Crossing tourists. The Getty Museum has made their collection of classic artwork available for you to download and print right now so it can be displayed in your own home. Now, you too can hang a $54 million Vincent Van Gogh painting right next to your toilet corner. My favorite though has got to be the Monterey Bay Aquarium it, it, it which doesn't cost them much. <laughs> itself in the game it. and is giving real tours. Anyway, today's theory isn't about any of that. It's about something much more oh, serious Isabella. and so. much darker. Today's theory takes a stake and drives it into the beating heart what, at the center of Animal Crossing. Because you I'm see, feel I that. don't think this game is exactly what it appears to be. I think I'm there's a now. tragic truth that's bubbling under the surface of happy-go-lucky animals and ridiculously yeah, sized nice warfish. So here I am you taking a late night like stroll, a virtual late night heads. stroll of course, I don't see much in real life, mostly just sludge from the couch over yeah. the kitchen and then back to the couch. So anyway, there I am just strolling along through the city center enjoying there, so. the relaxing music. Can't the say anything about sights, that. When suddenly an owl perched atop oh, the community wow. board. It wasn't Blathers, the refined museum curator. I would recognize him and his irrational insect hatred anywhere. Yeah, it wasn't course. Celeste, What's his that? sister, Always the astrologist my either. No, this owl was different. It didn't speak. It didn't interact. It didn't Why even it walk. Like it flew like an owl. A real owl. And when I looked into its beady little eyes, I didn't see the burden of sentience and mortal awareness. This owl was just instinct and animalistic reactions. When I stepped forward to get a closer look, an owl. it flew off into the night, gone as suddenly as it had arrived. But it got me thinking Come about back. all kinds of things. Come things back. that I'd never really stopped and questioned before. Blathers, Celeste, Cousteau, Croak, Twiggy. I mean, they're all animals. That is the name of the game, Animal Crossing. But they talk, they walk on two legs, like uh. my human character in the game. But the <laughs> owl in the square, the frogs that you catch in the lake, the yellow birds that appeared in previous games. Castle. I mean, they're all animals too, but they're different. They behave like normal animals. They run on instinct. They don't talk. They don't live and work in the village. There are also fish and turtles in the water, butterflies fluttering through the air, bugs crawling through the flowers, and yet here's an owl, and here's an owl. There are hamsters that you keep as pets in cages, an and hamsters that walk around your town and animal. talk like humans. What does it all mean? Well, after doing some digging, I believe That's that this is our first and most obvious clue that Animal Crossing oh isn't God. just a story about living in a cute village, fishing, protesting the local aquarium, 
Rastafarians, and sometimes so have about to watch my, out for the murderous know, Easter Bunny that's hiding over this. in the bushes. No, I believe that our character in Animal Crossing yeah. is surrounded by real human beings. Blathers, Tom Nook, Isabel, all of them. They're all humans. They're all real people that we are just seeing as animals. That is why we're what? also able to see real frogs, real owls, and fish, and birds alongside these more humanoid ones. But how? Oh, why? Yeah, well. well, I think it's the end result of our character's rare and very unusual mental illness. So strap in, loyal oh, theorists, and prepare it's to go down disease. a Hopkins rabbit well, hole with sorry. me that your pleasant read. memories from this game won't soon recover from. What we're talking about today is the incredibly rare and very unusual condition known as clinical lycanthropy. Not to be confused with normal course, lycanthropy, real. which is someone just not... turning into a wolf. Yeah, it's a werewolf syndrome. Also not to be confused with another rare werewolf syndrome called hypertrichosis, which causes excessive hair growth all over your body, making people look like Michael J. Fox from Teen Wolf. No, clinical lycanthropy <laughs> is, quote, an unusual nice. belief or delusion in which the patient thinks that he or she has been transformed into an animal, end quote. But clearly, it's our not, character isn't the animal yet. in Animal Everyone Crossing, right? It's literally everyone else around our character. Well, that's why there is lycanthropic intermetamorphosis, which has the sufferer see someone else or even a group of people as being transformed into some type of animal. That must now be you can start seeing why this theory might work. Clinical lycanthropy is so rare that it's tough to find a specific number of how many cases there have been diagnosed. An article on LiveScience.com reported that since 1850, there have mm -hmm. been 56 original case descriptions of people who believe that they were indeed metamorphosing into an animal. Now, I know what you're thinking. That. Sure, you have villagers like Chief, Fang, Kyle, Wolfgang, all of which <laughs> are obviously wolves, yeah. but there's way more Maybe types elephants. of animals present in our village. Why would a werewolf-related syndrome apply to them? Well, it's important to note that while lycanthropic inner metamorphosis is named after turning into a werewolf, the actual condition results in patients seeing all sorts of different animals. <laughs> a 2004 review Pikachu. of medical literature lists over 30 shit. published cases of lycanthropy, with only a few of them having a dog or wolf theme. Other animals that tended to pop up included cats, horses, birds, tigers, frogs, That's and foxes. And those are just the animals that appear in Animal Crossing. Real life patients also either saw or felt themselves transforming into non-game creatures like bees, hyenas, snakes. So already you can see how this is not only a real Imagine condition crazy someone sound can like have and how they can see other right? people like, as animals, oh God, but also how it's wolf. entirely possible that they see the huge <gasps> variety so of bad. animal types we see present like throughout the Animal Crossing sorry, okay. games. In fact, in one specific case from 2009, the patient believed that his father had changed into a boar and was attacking him, his brother had changed to a horse and sometimes kicked him, and his mother changed into a donkey, and he even heard her braying. So as you can tell, the cases that are reported are pretty wild. In one, a 24-year-old male believed that he was a cat trapped inside of a human body for 13 <laughs> years, stating that he had known that he was a cat since the secret had been imparted to him by the family cat that he grew up with, who subsequently taught he was him a cat. secret cat language. Like In cat his free meow. time, he lived with cats, he hunted with cats, he frequented cat night spots, which is a direct quote from the research paper I read, and I can't even imagine what that means. He went to, like, dumpsters at night? The milk bar, if cats the movie taught me anything? He had a crush yeah. on the tigress the in that? the local zoo, who he hoped to one day release from her captivity. In another lycanthropy story, you remember the face-eating guy from Florida? Uh, no. no. Actually, the other face-eating guy down in Florida. Wow, there's more than one, which That's... tells me there are far too many face-eating incidents happening down in Florida. Anyway, Why the one Florida? I'm Why talking is... about happened pretty face? recently in March of 2019 when a man suffering from clinical lycanthropy delusions was accused of murdering a couple and then chewing on the face of one of his victims. In this case, the man believed that he was half dog, half man. But okay, obviously there's not a whole lot of face-eating going on you know, in the world of animal crossing. Head, uh, and sure, we have go. some normal Skizzy animals who are scurrying around around yeah. the world that force us I'm to ask some very go. serious questions about the humanoid ones that we'll we see somebody, walking around on two face. legs, but what else can I point to to try and support this very wacky theory? Well, let's start with how this disorder might develop in the first place. What causes it? Are certain people more likely to deal with clinical lycanthropy than others? Well, most doctors believe that clinical lycanthropy is linked to schizophrenia or mood disorders like bipolar disorder. In fact, many doctors don't even classify clinical lycanthropy as its own syndrome and prefer to diagnose it as a symptom of other serious 
serious psychological conditions. And as with all that's mood weird. disorders, there's going to be a lot that's of different own, like, variables disorder. that can that's possibly not trigger Family history, age, a sudden stressful event. In one documented case of clinical lycanthropy, doctors believe the man's condition surely, was triggered by taking surely in a drug stressful ecstasy. Event, it'll make it worse. He reported never having psychiatric problems in the past, and then all of a sudden, his family is just a bunch of barnyard animals. Talk about a don't do drugs lesson there, kiddos. Yep, Pretty safe drugs, to say our villager ain't going out to any late night <sighs> raids, but Yo, that was he did a nice recently undergo my major mind. life events and a number Mouse of stressful pass. situations. Moving out, living alone, being in debt. Those are extremely stressful life events. Yeah. And if our character is a young adult, which we can probably assume based he's on 18. their appearance and the letters 12. that they're getting from mom at home, they're at a high risk for the onset of mental disorders. A study of 12 known oh, cases see. of lycanthropy oh, from the that. McLean Hospital put the average age of onset at 25, with the youngest cases occurring at age 16 and the oldest at age 38. Oh, Most shit, were taking place it. in the late teens and mid-20s, which is exactly where our Animal Crossing character would be. My so we have our so character in a vulnerable age, plus extreme stress Stressors, plus the general lack of any kind of support group because let's face it you're spending far more time in this game supporting all the other residents than they're doing supporting you and bam you've got yourself a recipe that is so for fucked a mental up. breakdown sure 99.99 percent of us make it through adulting without wanting to groom our neighbor's mane or pluck our I mean, postal I, I, workers I, I, I feathers but do it that. is Dude, a possibility like, lycanthropy is rare certainly super super rare one of the rarest diagnoses out there but it might just be the thing that rationalizes is the details that we're seeing in this game world. So do the other symptoms line up? Well, since the cases are few and far between, there's not one concrete list of how a doctor might diagnose this condition. But outside of, you know, seeing people as animals, generic, there generic are good. common symptoms and first-hand accounts that we can use to guide our diagnosis. For instance, disorganized mm. speech. In instances of clinical lycanthropy with disorganized speech symptoms, the patient often has trouble understanding words. Or the Hey there, today I saw I get too few fifth that's not they're hearing English. sounds of the animals that they believe that they're dealing with. And wouldn't you know it, we see both of these traits exactly in the way that other characters around us are communicating. I don't have any big news to share with you all today, but I would like to communicating. Though the animals speak English, yeah. or whatever your game's native language is, ducks have quacko catchphrases. Mice might say eeks or squeaky. The relevant <laughs> animal phrases are mixed into whatever we hear them saying. And that's not all. Remember, I said that patients with this condition sometimes have trouble understanding words. And though the captions in the game for the conversations are in English, the words that come out of the animal's mouths, what we actually are hearing, are almost impossible to understand. It's almost like it's a different language. It's disorganized speech. In a number of these cases, patients no, just, reportedly perceive changes to their own physical appearance. Some thought that their mouths and teeth had changed shape or their chests had gotten broader. Some experienced their body shrinking. If you simply walk up to a mirror in Animal Crossing, you can change virtually everything about your character's appearance in a matter of seconds. Hair color, skin color, That'd eyes, cool life, clothing. No. It takes no time at all. And the fact that the other creatures in town only ever change job? clothes Boom, makes it obvious that you're uh, the only person in town who can change your entire physical uh, appearance with the blink of an eye. Even weirder is the fact that no one comments on your new look. I don't know if that's true actually. Uh, I don't I, I don't know. So if anyone can <laughs> beg to differ with me on that one, but I'm assuming that if you make your eyes a different color or change I doubt anyone's saying like, hey, weren't your eyes a different color? There's also an interesting cultural examination to be made given the way the resident personalities seem to align with the animals that our villager sees him as. Blathers the owl is mm -hmm. wise and knowledgeable, just like we see owls portrayed in popular culture. Red the fox is sly and conniving. The raccoons <laughs> are resourceful and stingy. Animals in the game often just, have personalities like, that line up with traditional yeah, human notions of what those animals should be like, not like what those animals really are. This kind of cultural association is thought to be why sufferers uh. of clinical lycanthropy are able to define so specifically which animals they are transforming into, or which animals they imagine their landlord or favorite neighbor might become. It's less about becoming <laughs> a real a animal and more about becoming what us humans perceive those animals are supposed to be like. A lion isn't really noble or regal in real life. We humans just assign those traits to them. That's why the stubborn mother appears as a donkey or the angry aggressive father becomes a boar. And it's exactly what happens in Animal Crossing. The normal owls are just that. They're birds, owls flying around. But the human that we're Perceiving as an owl, owl just so happens to be the town's 
those wise know-it-all who works in a museum. Our character's psychology is assigning the animals to the people who best match them in the world around us. Lastly, remember that man who developed clinical lycanthropy after taking drugs? Well, yeah. he not only believed his family had turned into animals, he also said that his soul sometimes left his body and went to various places with these animals and found what others do in their houses. Does that sound familiar? In the game, we are able to walk into other villagers' homes and watch what they do, whether we interact with them or not. We can lie in their beds, we can look in their wardrobes, we can observe them with no He's repercussions. He's actually comfy, man. Seems like something they the probably want to comment on if, you know, we were actually there doing any of those things. This same man also stated that there was a, quote, angel protecting him and that he could hear some people talking to him about his daily activities. Every morning on Animal oh Crossing goodness. starts with a declaration of the day's activities from Isabel. And talking to just about any villager in the game means that they're going to comment on you and how you're choosing to spend your day. As far as having an angel protecting them, well, what do you call us? The player. The person who is oh. literally controlling that individual's life. An ensuring angel. that they're guided the right or sometimes even the wrong way. Or, you know, just ignoring everything else in the world and fishing for 200 hours of total playtime. Long story <laughs> short, we are complicit in this. We are yeah, feeding into this character's psychosis. When asked about the role mental illness played in the game Hellblade Senua's Sacrifice, Ninja Theory's founder said this, quote, First and foremost, it was about creating a compelling adult fantasy game. But the deeper we've gone into development, the more we've seen that there's also an opportunity to raise awareness of psychosis. For my part, I've learned that people can experience hallucinations and delusional beliefs without it being a problem. The illness comes when those experiences cause suffering. Often the recovery isn't about curing yourself of hallucinations, but finding ways to live with them. That was a revelation to me. End quote. Video games have long That's been at the cool forefront of pushing Jesus. the traditional limits of storytelling and exploring new adventures and challenges of all kinds. Representations of mental disorders, especially rare ones, are another way to do exactly that. Do I believe that that was the intention of Animal Crossing? No. no, certainly not. I do think it's weird that you can catch and sell frogs in the wild to larger humanoid frogs. And I think the quote of, I caught a frog, yeah, or a cousin. new neighbor and I have some apologizing to do, is yet another piece of evidence for the theory showing how our character <laughs> struggles with the differences between what is and isn't an animal, but whatever. I do think it's all just for fun. That said, in their most simplistic form, video games are a means of escape. They allow us to put aside our daily worries for an hour, or two, or five, or two hundred hours of fishing, and throw ourselves into a world where we can just release tension, have some fun, and worry about things that don't really matter. It's catharsis in action, and it's part of the reason why I love the medium of video games. But they're also incredible learning tools for seeing the world through a new pair of eyes. Playing a game where the main character is nothing like us helps us learn about experiences different than our own. Interactive storytelling can and should be used as a way to Life better appreciate and understand the world around us. It's a way to inject just a little more empathy into all of our lives. And couldn't we all use a little bit more of that these days? But we do. hey, that's just, just a theory. It. A game! I swear he ruins all the games. Like, not in a bad way, like, it just... It... <sighs> Why do these theories link up? Okay, it just doesn't make sense. It's like they wanted them to mess the game. I'm never gonna see the game again in the same way, and you're never gonna see it the same way. All right, it's now you're just gonna think, uh huh? I'm requesting. It's that stupid. That's that kid. Well, not kid. That adult who's uh, you know, delusional and sees every dude as an animal. Ugh. If you guys enjoyed the video and and ask God, hit the like button to unscore yourself. Trust me, it doesn't work. But please like and subscribe, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Peace.